Hi everyone, Lisa here with a quick tutorial on how to create a wedding invitation using Adobe InDesign. So this is what I call a digital wedding invitation because you're going to try to make it look pretty on a in a digital format so that it can be printed out by you at home. A lot of people try to do like they're like I need to buy a letterpress and I need to get a you know white printing and do all this fancy stuff. But when you're just starting out as a wedding invitation designer, this will be more than sufficient or you can send it to your client to have them print it themselves at a local printer. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. It is a text-based one with just a pretty background and then you can get going and then we'll have some more tutorials later. I have another one, a save the date that is going up next week as well. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every day. Now you will need Adobe InDesign for this tutorial. I will leave a link to it below if you do not have it. And I'm gonna flip the screen. Here is the wedding invitation that we'll be creating together. It only uses two fonts because less is more and the simpler it is, usually the more elegant and refined it looks. So over here, we're going to go to file, new document, document and we're going to change the units to inches and we're going to do a five by seven. I, this is already saved because obviously I just made this invitation, um, but that's pretty much the standard size. Obviously you can change yours to anything you want, but we are doing more of a portrait style invitation together today to make sure facing pages is turned off and the orientation is set to portrait. And then over here for margins, you're going to put 0.25 for all four of these. And then for bleed, you're going to put 0.1 one, two, five and make sure it's the same for all four. And then slug, we don't care about. So we're gonna go ahead and say create. Now we're gonna take our text box and we're gonna put our, I'm just gonna line it right up here with the margins. And I am going to make sure that this is centered. Now, if your workspace does not look like mine, I do two things every time I open up Adobe InDesign. First, I go to view and I make sure overprint preview is selected. Clearly I said I do that every time, but I didn't this time. And then window, I go to workspace and I make sure Essentials Classic is selected because that's usually what I'm most familiar with. Nothing wrong with these other ones. It's just easier for me to be familiar and go to one workspace every single time. All right, what were we doing? We were typing. <laughs> so over here uh, in the center, we are going to type, uh, please join us for, and then we are going to change this to a wedding font. And we're gonna use Antique Didone, which is pretty much like the go-to standard that everybody uses. We're gonna make these all caps and we're gonna leave it at 12, but for this tracking over here, we're gonna change it to, let's try a 50 and see how that looks. I'm pretty comfortable with the 50. Uh, so we're just gonna leave it there. Remember, the further away it is for tracking, the more legible or readable it is for the eye to see. You could try 100, that might be just a little too much. Uh, we could go for something in between, 75. Again, you just kinda wanna play with this and see what works. And again, print it out. This is a digital wedding invitation. And even if it wasn't, you wanna print it out just to see if it looks a little bit different on paper, especially when it's a five by seven uh, invitation versus on your screen, which I have a massively huge screen, so everything looks very large and legible. But we're just gonna go ahead and take this and we can make this a little smaller and we're gonna just copy and paste that so the next line goes underneath here and we're gonna say, join us for the wedding of. Now this one, uh, we probably want to use, we don't wanna use all caps, it's all going to be all lowercase. We're gonna use a script font for some variation and I'm gonna use the LaRoche, again, very popular wedding font and I'm gonna change this to a 50. Now it's too big, that's why you see the plus sign to fit in there, so I'm gonna make that text box a little bigger. And obviously for a script font, you never, or hopefully it's obvious, you never ever wanna use any tracking. So we're just gonna leave it at zero. And then this has what's called glyphs. So if you have the latest version of Adobe InDesign, if you ever highlight over a letter, the glyphs, which are different options for the letters will show up. So we're gonna to try to make it a little fancier and use this. Now, if you don't see that, you can always go to window and you can, can you go to window? I lie, you can go to character there. You can go to type and then you can go to glyphs and it'll bring up the glyphs window. Um, 
and we're going to pick this one to just make it a little fancier. Uh, and so please join us for the wedding of. So we have our two fonts that we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and create character styles so I don't have to keep reusing this or I could just keep copying and pasting these boxes. Either one works. Um, so I'm going to copy this and paste this. Please join us for the wedding of and I'm gonna bring this up here. Now this is gonna be really big, so I'm just gonna make the text box big so I know I can use that. And I'm gonna say Jenna. And I'm gonna make this a larger font. So I'm gonna make this double, I'm gonna try 25 and see how that looks. I kinda of like that, I think it looks good. It's like a nice big modern font. Um, and then I can make this, well, I can probably make it that size. I'm gonna copy and paste this and the name of the groom is Stephen. So Stephen is the same size. And then I'm gonna put their middle and last name, but I'm gonna make these smaller and they're gonna go underneath. So it's gonna be Jenna Avalon Baker. And I'm gonna copy and paste this. And this one is going to be Stephen. Don't worry about the, um, the, uh, what am I, spacing, we'll fix that later, Francis Carter. All right, and then we need to say and. So we're just gonna copy and paste this, put this right here in the middle and say and. And again, we're gonna try to change these to those glyphs. I'm gonna highlight and I can see that this one is the one for the left side and this one is the one for the right side. So we have, please join us for the wedding of Jenna Avalon Baker and Stephen Francis Carter. And now we are going to input that date. So we are going to, again, use, whoops, not that one. We're gonna use the Stephen one. No, I keep grabbing the and. Let's make that smaller. There we go. We're gonna copy and paste the Stephen and we're gonna pull it down here to the middle. And we're going to use, um, I can't remember what that's called. I just call it the up and down line. It has a fancy name, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, and I probably don't need that space, honestly. So we're gonna get rid of that. And then we're gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna double this and make this a 50. All right, now we need the letters that go to the left and the right. So we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna make this May. And because this isn't going in the center anymore, now we can just kind of make it a block. And then we can copy and paste that and put this over here. And this is 2024 or whenever they're getting married. All right, again, don't worry about the spacing. I know it looks off, <laughs> it's crooked. We'll come back to this. All right, so those are the dates and now we need to add the time. So we are going to paste this over here. And we're gonna say five o'clock in the evening. Wouldn't it be great if it was 5 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> it's an early morning wedding because the bride and the groom are like early morning risers. Okay, everything you notice is in a separate text box and that's because we wanna be able to manually size it how we want. Uh, and then over here, this is the New York Public Library. And this will stay together, 40 West, um, actually we'll write it all out, West 44th Street and New York, New York. And we'll make some room, more room down here. And then we will go back to this font, the script font and bring it down here. And we will say reception to follow. So Stephen and Jenna are loaded. And that's why they're having their wedding at the New York Public Library. I don't even know, like, the I think the line to get, waiting line is like massively huge. All right, so now we're gonna fix these letters here again. So that reception and then the W. So it extends it out a little, so it just looks a little bit fancier. There are some script fonts you can look that have glyphs that go way out, like almost all the way out to the sides, or they sometimes just have, um, not glyphs, but just extra flourish thingies that you can just manually add, like actual images onto a wedding invitation as well, or you can free draw them. All right, so I want to change this. Um, I'm going to try to pull this up a little. And I never have to worry about left and right or what the center is because I made this these all of this text centered. 
and I cinched it between those um, those margin lines. So we're gonna go up a little higher, Jenna, and we might have to make this text box smaller so we can get to the thing underneath. All right, so here's where you're gonna kind of just eyeball it. Um, so, and it always depends, and the reason I say eyeball it is you could do all that fancy stuff with, you know, spreading it out, but these words and the names are always going to be different. So, you know, the A next to the J may look a little different on one name versus another. So that's why I always just eyeball these things. And we're gonna say, and, and we'll say Steven, and we'll make this smaller. And we'll just move this up here. Oh, that's obviously way too close. That looks better. Maybe it could go down just one more because that J goes really far. You can see it goes further. If we draw a ruler, you can see the J goes further down than the rest of the words. Whereas Steven, nothing goes down. So it just looks more even. That's why I always say kind of eyeball it. All right, we're gonna take this um, and pull it over here just so we can see where the center is for this box. So the 24 is gonna come up a little higher. And then these, now that I see where the center is, I can just kind of line these two things up next to this. So I might want to move the May in a little closer, uh, just because of the way, it's only three characters versus four, so that's why it looks just a little bit like it's too far over to the left, whereas 2024 is a four digit year. All right, so I'm happy with that. Um, and then we're gonna move five o'clock up so it's closer to the 24. And then we'll move New York Public Library up, but not too close so it looks separate like an address. And then we'll say reception to follow. All right, we're done. So the only thing we have to do next is add our background. So the background, you're actually going to add as the master page. So you can see here, it says a parent applied. That's the master page. So over here, we're gonna go to that parent page. Now, if you don't see pages on the right, just go to window and make sure there is a check mark in front of pages. And that will bring up this menu on the right, or sometimes, I don't know why, sometimes the menus are like disconnected from InDesign and just floating somewhere on your desktop. I'm not really sure why that happens, but, find it, it's there if the check mark is there. Um, so for this image, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna zoom out a little. So you can see this red line, that's the bleed line. Uh, so that if these were to be printed, you can, the pattern goes all the way to the edges. Now, this is not an eight and a half by 11, so it's a five by seven. So most likely on your printer, this will print okay. If you are printing though, a, document that is uh, exactly five by seven and you're manually feeding it in, you will have to change the settings on your printer. Every single printer is different. Uh, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I really like using this marble image over here. So I'm gonna drag this image over here and I'm gonna line it up again with the bleed line and I'm gonna drag it all the way out. So now I can manually just pull this up. It really doesn't matter if these go further than the bleed line, but I just like to line it up. So when we go back here, that looks a little odd because it's right in the middle, so it's not very legible. I like it where I had the original, where it was kind of like centered. So we're gonna go back up here to the parent and I'm gonna hit this direct selection tool. And again, I'm gonna zoom out where I'm just hitting command in the subtraction key. And I'm gonna make sure that just that object's selected. And I know that because there is a red outline instead of a blue outline. And I'm gonna grab this corner, I'm gonna hit the shift key, and I'm just gonna pull it out. Now, it's probably too high up, so I'm gonna pull it down here. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. We can pull this in a little bit more so you can see a little more of that design. And I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe move it more to this side. And let's go ahead and double click on the actual invitation and look at it. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's pretty close to this. All right, so this was maybe a little higher. So let's go back to here. And again, you don't have to match it up perfectly. It's just kind of what works for you. And let's 
double click that. All right, so now it's a little more legible. So I will zoom in so you can see this. Uh, so now we have this nice sort of gold foiling glitter going through the imitation, a little bit of a, uh, what do you call it? A, I guess, cloudy kind of look um, going through here. And so now we have our wedding invitation. If you are on the regular selection tool and you hit W, you can see it without any of the bleed lines or any guides at all. So you can kind of see how it looks and see if you're happy with that. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I like it. I might want to move this and this down just a little bit. Um, or maybe that was too much. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So that is all you need to do to create a wedding invitation, a digital wedding invitation, usually has a nice background kind of like this. Um, and the next lesson, well, not tomorrow, but it'll come out next week. We are going to do a save the date together, totally different style. I'm not trying to create a wedding suite. I'm just trying to show you different things that you can do with Adobe InDesign to create wedding invitations. And remember, I made this so that I think an RSVP card would be on a smaller um, card uh, that someone could respond to and put in one of those tiny little RSVP envelopes because they cost less to mail. Uh, so I hope that this lesson was helpful. And remember, if you would like more information on how to start your own wedding invitation business, uh, there is a link below to the starter guide. And I hope everyone's having a fabulous, wonderful day. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.